Hi guys, so today we'll be discussing a weekly breakout strategy. So um, it's performed pretty decent in many stocks, but there are stocks there it didn't perform well as well. So uh, I'll just run through some of the stocks where it did perform well. Amazon, HD, G&J, Walmart. So it's a typical uh, breakout kind of a strategy. Uh, which takes a kind of consolidation and then if it closes above the consolidation, what do you get? And there are certain areas where it didn't work. I think um, PayPal and I think it's uh, Facebook, some of these stocks where it was not that of a great advantage to be in this trade as well. But anyways, we'll discuss this strategy in detail. So let's start. Um, so basically all you need to do is click on open and then strategy and then whatever was defaulted there, just delete it off. Um, and then we can start. So basically I'm going to write a strategy. Uh, I'm going to call it weekly breakout in YouTube. Um, and then overlay equals true so we can display the data. Overlay equals true if there's any indicator. So small letters true. So yeah, we have named the strategy now. Let's go into the detail on what the strategy is. So strategy is a pretty simple uh, strategy of breakout. So as you can see here, if I just put it down here, you can see a consolidation here. And then I want to enter when the market breaks above this consolidation or when the market breaks above our highest high. So sometimes it might not be a consolidation, sometimes it can be trending up and then we enter the trade. But I also have to make sure the risk management is pretty good as well. So, so I'm going to do if statement. So if close is greater than highest of close of 1, 20 and close is greater than SMA close comma 130 then tab strategy dot entry long strategy dot long so um, to go into the details of this one um, so basically we have got the um, uh, close and then we're checking this highest function so the highest what it does is so before that I haven't declared the version so I just need to declare the version so here it'll be version version equals four make sure there's at the rate in there so now you've got the highest uh, indicator uh, has come up now um, so basically what it does is it takes the close now why am I using the close that's the number one question so Close is like a confirmation for many of the breakouts or uh, anything really. So when, when let's say hundred dollars is like the you know a stock price. So, so when the market cr crosses the one hundred dollars, it's not like a big deal because the market just crossed the one hundred dollars. But on the other hand, if it closes today or last week above the one hundred dollars, it's like a confirmation that the market has broken the hundred dollars um resistance so that can be said both for support or resistance or any other psychological value like 100 to 200 or 1000 uh, dollar value so close kind of gives confirmation so rather than looking at the high and low which most of the people normally look i like to see the close because that gives me a confirmation so what this highest thing takes is that it takes all the highest values of the close of the previous day so most people will just do high of one um, so me on the other hand what i'm doing is i'm taking the close of the past 20 weeks so make sure this is on a weekly chart so uh, because our strategy is on a weekly time frame so it takes the value of the past 20 days and see whether yesterday it closed uh, higher than that 20 days so we're using close of one because if i use close here what happens is that it checks the current day and sometimes the current day might be the high close so in that case we won't get the signals uh, so we have to make sure uh, that the close is greater than the highest of close of one comma 20. so I'm just going to randomly go to some of the other stocks as well so you can just get an example here. So it's clo the, the closing, when, when we position, when we close the position, we'll, be, uh, we'll see in a bit. So basically it goes long here, uh, long here, close here, long here. So this, this is a very good example of uh, consolidation break, I think. So here the market has closed um, higher and then we enter here in the long and we just uh, kept on with this position and it closed the position there uh, so what's our exit signal 
So our x signal, before we come to the x signal, I want to talk about the number 20 and 130. So the 20 and 130 are optimized values. So basically what optimization is, is basically uh, I change the numbers from a plethora of numbers. It could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, 10, 15, doesn't matter, and I see which is the best one that gives me the best reward for the strategy. Not only the best reward, but also the risk as well, the best drawdown. So one of the things I use, which I teach in the course as well, is the uh, CAR to drawdown ratio. So the cumulative annual return with respect to drawdown. So that ratio should be pretty good. So that gives us how much uh, reward I'm getting for the amount of risk that I'm taking. So that will be on one stock, but I have to optimize it for a multitude of stocks, over thousands of stocks over the past 25 or years. So that's called portfolio backtesting. So once that backtest is clear and that optimization is clear, then I do a forward testing. So forward testing is basically uh, you test over the past 10 years and then uh, let's say from 2000 to 2010, I backtest and I optimize for 2000, 2010, and then I run that result on 2010 to 2020, that's called forward testing. So YouTube does that as well. So for example, you watch a, a lot of videos, YouTube gets an idea what kind of videos it watches, and then YouTube will recommend you a certain amount of videos, and then it sees whether it works or not. So that's basically forward testing. Uh, some people call it work forward analysis. Some people call it testing data to training data. So the optimization values uh, data is called the testing data, and the I mean the training data, and the new values, new data is called the testing data. So once the optimization, back testing and forward testing is done, then we do the um, Monte Carlo simulation as well, which is basically randomization traits. All of this is taught uh, in our course. So uh, people who have done this course know it thoroughly how the process of finding these values and double checking these values is. So there are better values than 20 and 130, but obviously I'm not going to let, uh, let it out. So you have to find it out yourself by doing all these tests. Um, so we're done with the entry signal. Now the exit is basically a pretty simple um, stop loss and take profit. So unlike the typical stop loss and take profit of two is one and three is one, I'm going to go a bit aggressive. So before that, I'm just going to write the codes of the uh, uh, stop loss. So it's strategy dot position underscore average price asterisk one minus stop loss. So I'm just going to give stop loss and take profit here. The values I'll give it later. So for people, I'm not going to go detail into what the um, uh, code and the description is because we've, we've actually done this many times. But if you actually want to know uh, about it, you can visit our channel. There's um, create stop loss and take profit. Uh, there's also trailing stop loss code as well. So if you guys want to know about that. Uh, creating stop loss and trading stop loss, you can actually uh, get the codes from here. Uh, but many of the strategies, whether the RSI strategy or the, I think the ADX strategy also we did uh, was basically stop loss take profit. So I'm not going to go detail into explaining uh, how we came across this code. And then I'm just going to copy this. And paste there. So this will be long profit. So this will be one plus take profit. Then if, so if we are in a position, we don't have to uh, run the code all the time. So if strategy dot position underscore size is greater than zero, so which says that we are in a position, then strategy dot exit So ID, okay, we need to we need to give a name for our uh, close. So I'm just going to write it close, comma, what's a stop loss? A stop equals uh, long stop. And then limit equals long profit. So hopefully all the codes are done. Um, so long stop will take the um, 
you know the values of the stop loss and take profit so stop loss and take profit this time will be pretty simple so this is like a percentage value so that's why we're doing one minus sl and one plus tp so the stop loss will be 0 0.10 which is like 10 percent now take profit i'm going to go very aggressive here because i want this to be like something that i hold on for a substantial period of time that's why i'm using a weekly strategy and i want it to run i want my profits to run i want it to run like a trend following kind of a momentum kind of a strategy that's a whole idea of why we're using um, this uh, strategy really so it will be 0 0.40 so we're basically using a 4 is to 1 uh, strategy so hopefully the we don't have any errors so regardless I'm going to yeah save this just going through roughly everything is perfect um, I'm gonna remove the previous one and then I'm gonna add this to the chart okay so here we go so we have got the uh, results here now you see these percentage numbers so that percentage numbers is not correct and there's a reason why that percentage numbers is not correct because um, this percentage numbers is created or compared to one hundred thousand dollars initial capital so let's say for instance you buy a stock for fifty dollars and you get out at um, uh, one hundred dollars so you're basically making you know, $50 profit, or if you're getting in at $100 and getting out at $200, you're making $100 profit. But what happens with TradingView is that TradingView compares this $100 to $100,000. So that's basically 0.001%. So every trade they add will be just 0.001%. So that gives us a messy value, not only the value in the net profit, the dangerous value is the maximum drawdown, which is our risk metric. These values doesn't change. So we need to change this to 100% equity and then we will get actual value. So don't care about the dollar values, always look at the percentage number. So even if it's 100,000 or 10,000, it doesn't change much. Now, there might be a slight change in the decimal points and small change in the values, and that's because of rounding of decimal numbers of the dollar value. So even if it's 1,000, doesn't make any barely any difference again 7,000 something percentage so I'm going to put it back to 100,000 1 million whatever it doesn't matter at the end of the day all you should look is the percentage values not the dollar values of either of them the percentage values of the net profit and the maximum drawdown so let's go deep into the list of trades here so uh, because we're given a 4 is to 1 percentage so let's see if that has worked so here we've got a 40% 10% 40% um 40.01 percent so that's basically slippage uh because of gap days and stuff so uh, if the market opens as a gap you basically can lose money if you're exiting on the stop loss situation or any and on a take profit situation so you have an option to put slippage here but i don't like to put a slippage uh simply because some areas you get your an advantage situation. for example here you got it at 40.01 so that 40.01 cancels out the 10.01 and sometimes it can be bigger amount as well so uh, for microsoft okay here for instance is minus 11 um, sometimes you will see 41 42 percent and all those things so it normally kind of cancels out the slippage but if you really want to put some slippage values over the takes you can go ahead uh, and put a slippage values so the other thing that i want you to uh, look for is that this four is to one can again be optimized so Again, I optimize, this can be a 3.5, this can be a 5 is to 1, um, this can be anything, but you need to find it by optimization and do a forward testing and do a Monte Carlo simulation and back test it across thousands of stocks that's called portfolio back testing to confirm those values. You can't just blindly go ahead and use a 4 is to 1 uh, risk uh, management. Um, so now I'm just going to look at the performance summary. So basically, the most important thing you need to look for is the... Um, number of winning trades number of losing trades so since this is a trend following strategy we're not looking for the win ratio we're basically looking for the average winning trade and average losing trade so you can see the average winning trade is five is to one um over five into three and 126 so ratio of average win to average loses 3.9 which is something that we're looking for the other thing we need to look for is the largest winning trade so the largest winning trade is 40 percent, and the largest losing trade is 11 percent, which shows our risk management metrics is working uh, the average bars in a trade, so 28. So that's expected. So 28 weeks, by the way. So 28 weeks is such a long time, but that's the kind of strategy that I, you know, I'm looking for in this. I want something that's long term. So one of the um, members, our subscribers, has asked for should we compare the buy and hold returns? Because the buy and hold return is pretty high. So the truth of the matter is we shouldn't. So I think it's in the ADX strategy. 
uh, which you haven't uh, if you haven't watched it I've given a detailed description so thanks SE for asking me that question but I've given a completely detailed description of it so basically the reason why we shouldn't compare buy and hold is many of these stocks whether you look at Apple they're all listed as penny stocks many many years ago so their value was like 0.001 or something so if you buy and hold those stocks obviously you would make um, you know a substantially huge return in the buy and hold return so you can't expect to hold every single penny stock across the world because thousands get listed every year uh, so there's a practicality situation and there's also a lack of awareness situation when apple got listed i was not even born uh maybe i was born i don't know um many of the stocks were and it was not that famous when these penny stocks uh, get listed we know apple right now we only know about the successful stocks right now so regarding about the watch list as well so um the stocks that i trade normally are the stocks that i believe are good quality companies so one of the ways that i use to find good quality companies uh, is basically i look uh, through a list of 13f filings so you can find the details of that by watching this video copy hedge fund managers it's like free information that you can get online on what the value investors uh, are investing in so basically uh, you actually will only be trading uh, those kind of companies so i know that these companies are good these companies are healthy because warren buffett or michael berry um, or guy spear have all invested in it or lilu has invested in it so um it works so it does pretty well in those companies so i would rather have the strategy um run in those kind of companies rather than any other companies so uh, this is a simple weekly breakout strategy so there's another weekly breakout strategy. so in this one if you look at uh, uh, the point group editor the only real confirmation i've used is a close so in um, in our stan weinstein strategy we use two two more additional things so stan uses two more additional things which also i've coded and uh, um i put it in there so the code by the way is available free in the description so i'll leave the code for this strategy and all the strategies in the description so you can have fun with it yeah so stan white strategy is like they use a, a strength indicator uh, and also a volume as well so when they compare these two it gives more confirmation for the weekly breakout uh, so you can add that as well if you fancy you can compare the code of this one and also to compare the code of the other one and you can figure out yeah whether this works or not so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the um, strategy. Uh, feel free to ask some questions in the uh, description. I'll be more than happy to answer it. Uh, but regardless, keep on optimizing these values. Try to figure out, try to make minor changes. Maybe you can add an RSI filter to it. Maybe you can add something else to it. But at the end of the day, uh, play around. You will kind of enjoy the strategy. Uh, weekly strategies and monthly strategies are always good because it kind of filters out the uh, all the chaos that goes around in the market so most of the time people look at the minute chart and the daily chart and they're always panicking but weekly chart really helps you with you know managing your um, trades very well just being in the trade gives you a massive advantage so for instance here in tesla uh, it's been consolidating for such a long period of time where we're exiting in a small loss small loss small loss and then finally you get those big trades here and the big trades there so that's the amazing thing about the weekly strategy it, not only gives you peace of mind but it also works very efficiently so so hope you like it have a great day uh, enjoy